What's up guys, he King here, bringing you another live reaction to this week's One Piece chapter 957. So yeah, the hype is real, apparently we're still not in Act 3 of Wano, we're continuing on where we left off with the uh, revelations from last week, which I kind of forgot about. Oh wait, Morgan kicked ass, uh, and yeah, we know he's a badass now, and the Shinji Bukai system has been dissolved. There was an assassination attempt at the Reverie, someone has died, possibly Sobo, he's obviously not dead, guys, but maybe someone has died, we don't know who, but let's find out, let's get into this then, so yeah. So we got the color pa the cover page, it's a big color spread, uh, big up your speed. Nami, 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 uh, where's it? giving a sweet to a toe there. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like a, a good, fun time of a ride. Anyway, we're on to the first page of this, uh, of this chapter, page four. So here we go, New World Marine HQ. So we got the new, so obviously this is the new world. They've got a new Marine HQ there. Uh, I assume this is basically like sort of Marine, uh, Marine Fall 2, basically. Uh, anyone realise that those two shapes behind the castle there look like a big McDonald's M, like, when you look at it, like, without the castle, it's probably a McDonald's M. <laughs> you must be satisfied, you must be satisfied, Ishu. The, abol the, ab abom the abolition of the Seven Warlords system was your goal, after all. We never saw eye to eye on it, but the kings of the world have spoken. As the day of the raid draws closer, the other side is New Marineford. Oh, they even call it New Marineford here, that's that's cool. So what's the chapter called? Uh, Ultimate. So the chapter is called Ultimate. And it looks like it looks like we're with Aikainu and he's talking to uh, Fujitoro there, like... Um, and obviously Fujitoro's talking back to him, so from the uh, smiling, uh, from the, uh, the snails. You still think the warlords were a necessity, despite all the sacrifices that we had to make for their sake. It must be because you've now personally suffered under them. Ooh, Fujitoro giving it to Akainu, man, like, uh, yeah, man, with all these bullshit about absolute justice, he was, yeah, it's actually kind of true, like, um, it's kind of weird, like, he's this sort of, like, dude who's, like, talking about absolute justice, going, uh, you know, no matter what, you know, get rid of the enemy and that, and yet he was willing to work with the freaking... Uh, Shinpa Baku with the warlords basically and you got Fujitoria now like let's just put our faith in the SSG going forward the power balance of the world will definitely be shaken what's the SSG has it occurred okay this is Aikainu now talking back to him has it occurred to you that it might change for the worst well oh it looks like they're in a fight as well Fujitoria's on a ship and, and all the soldiers look like they're firing stuff like what is going on I, I assume they've gone after one of the em emperors, basically. That's what I'm assuming, like, what's going on. Apparently, in Wano, Big Mom and Kaido have formed an alliance. Oh, this is uh, surprising to Fujitara there. What? Does this mean the rocks have returned? The rocks. Stop talking like there's some kind of legend. This is reality we're facing here. The rocks. So, I had, apparently, there were spoilers out. People were talking about the rocks, and I have no idea who they are. And then someone told me, oh, wait, they were mentioned, like, uh, back in the reverie early reverie chapters with Grop and that when uh, when uh, Admiral Hena, Hina was uh, talking about it so this was something this was set up like like back into chapter 905 or something or 907 so it's like damn man like that was that was a lot that was like a year ago so you know it's gonna be hard to remember all of that uh, info you know but uh, apparently this is gonna apparently we're gonna get a lot of detail here so I'm interested uh, to see what that is for the, so we're back with well, well, Akainu now, like, it looks pissed. For this to happen when we're already so busy, what a disaster. Two of the emperors aligned, and it just had to be now of all times. Well, the report stated the alliance is only tentative, tentative at this stage. So, uh, uh, yeah, it, it looks like, uh, I don't know, what's going on? So we're, we're with Son Geku here, and he's with someone, dude, that... I think they're talking, I think they're having some sort of meeting with all the marines there, with all the admirals. There hasn't been any damage done yet, but we have no idea what they're planning and we have no countermeasures prepared either. In truth, we know almost nothing about the legendary rock pirates. So, from what I've gotten from what people talked about in the community and that, the, the rocks pirates were pretty much uh, the group that consisted of Kaido, Whitebeard, uh, Big Mom back when they were a pirate crew, so... That's like holy shit! Like, Shanks was obviously on Gold Rogers, so you know he wasn't part of that. He wasn't part of that pirate crew. But god damn, like these three used to be on a crew together. Like, how strong were they, and what happened? Like, why did they dissolve on that? Like, 
So when we're with Sangoku now, uh, Big Mom and Kaido have been fighting like cats and dogs for years. Uh, that's a nice metaphor there, what with, uh, um, um, uh, what was it, Inorushi and uh, Nikomomushi, like, no one could have foreseen this. Very few marines are familiar with the name rocks nowadays. Many years ago on the Pirate's Island Beehive, many significant individuals came together to seek a quick path to fame and fortune. That meeting led to the formation of the Rocks Pirates. They were a violent group killing both friend and foe alike. So wait a minute, Whitebeard was part of this group, right? That dude's like, he, he, I think next to, well, we, we, to be honest, we, we know particularly nothing about Shanks except his relationship with Luffy. And we can, we, you know, a lot of us would say, oh yeah, he's cool, do you know what I mean? But like, uh, obviously Shanks is cool, but uh, to this day I'm still saying that he's a red herring, like there's, there's more to him, like he's probably like, I don't know, like, like I, I like him, but at the same time I'm very wary, wary of him, do you know what I mean? But Whitebeard, we know a lot about him, he, the dude was chill, he was probably the, the best emperor, like in terms of just having a heart in there, but like Kaido and Big Mom, like they're monsters, like there's no going about it, they're monsters, and the fact that Whitebeard was part of this crew, like, what? Like, what the hell happened? Like... <laughs> Uh, page seven, it's it's members. Okay, so wow, this is a this is a pretty awesome silhouette that we're getting on the crew here, rocks pirates. So uh, it's not rocks as in R O X. It, it's I think it is literally R O C K S rocks. But yeah, you've got a young Kaido there. Like he doesn't look that massive compared to what he is now. He looks he looks like a pretty normal average big dude if you know what I mean he's got that hammer he's, he's holding a club behind him he's got the horns big mom looks slender as hell there with a little pose uh, there's someone uh, between big mom and who are, who's, who's pretty much uh, white beard there like and then there's uh, there's another dude next to Kaido and there might be another dude next to the little dude that's next to Kaido so yeah there's at least maybe two or three characters here that we're not aware of its members included, oh, okay, Jesus Christ, here we go. Its members included Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido in their youth. They were led by their captain, Rox. What? So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, holy shit. So their captain was called Captain Rox. Okay. Uh, so what happened to Rox? Indeed, those three used to sail on the same ship. Unbelievable. Many, so yeah, all the admirals and marines that are there listening to this, they're like, what the hell? Like, rightfully so. Like, this is a what the hell for us too. I mean, we're the readers that are reading this and we're like, what? I mean, we knew beforehand they were on a ship together, you know, Kaido and Big Mom. I don't remember if they said Whitebeard was with them, but if, if this is the first time, this is the first time I'm hearing of it, I think, and uh, I'm like, what the hell? Unbelievable. With many others who sailed on the rocks also eventually made a name for themselves, such as the Golden Lion. The Golden Lion, isn't that cheeky from a uh, strong world? I've not, I've not seen that film. I've seen the prologue, which was amazing, but uh, I have not seen that movie. But uh, it, it, it's kind of funny that they, that they have. This isn't, this isn't the first time this character has been mentioned. He was mentioned in the manga before, but uh, it's kind of also that they've got this filler character. Basically, was basically part of the canon of the story. So, such as the Golden Lion, the Silver Axe. Who's Silver Axe? Captain John. Oh, so we got a John. We got a Captain John. Does that mean Long John Silver? And Ochaku, Choku. Who the hell are those? Are you serious? Then how come all all this isn't common knowledge? Ochaku, known as Wogzi Jinich in Chinese, Wogzi in Chinese, was a real Chinese pirate lord from the 16th century. Oh, okay. So that's that's uh, that's some real life inspiration there. Uh, there's uh, there's Son Goku petting a goat. Well, one reason is is that most of the members couldn't stand each other, so they downplayed their exploits as a group. Their captain rocks strive to become the king of the world. Okay, so instead of becoming the king of the pirates, this dude wanted to become the king of the world. They were basically a terrorist group barring their fangs at the world government. So the government covered up their actions, which is another reason. But back then, their name was known throughout the world. If it was known throughout the world, how come this is the first we're hearing of it? Come on. Uh, 38 years ago, a fateful incident occurred at a place known as God Valley. Wow, God, that sounds uh, ominous. God Valley. God Usurp! Can you, can you just imagine, like... That looks kind of awesome. I want to go there now. On that fateful day, the Rocks, the strongest pirate crew in the world, perished on that island. The incident was big news. So now, it's so obviously we're going on a flashback, and... Uh, yeah, we, we're getting a flashback, and Grop is there in his younger days. Holy shit, and he's all battered and bloody up, but he's like standing there, and all the marines are behind him cheering and screaming. 
is this what made him famous? Because if you guys remember, like, Grop was, is very, very famous in the Marines, like, uh, for, for his history and the stuff that he's done. So I'm wondering if this is one of those besides him capturing... Because he didn't technically capture Gold D. Roger. He surrendered, didn't he? Because he was dying of the disease, so he, he chose to die. But there's something else that made Grob famous for uh, that, that, that he's so well known. So I'm wondering if this is it. Their unstoppable evil rampage, which, tram which trampled all, all, all over all in its wake, was finally quilled by Marine Vice Admiral Grump. After the incident, Grump's name reverberated river, river, river across the world, and that is now that is how he became known as the hero of the Marines. Ah, so that's that backstory explained. Uh, it looks like we're still continuing, and uh, I think I'll pause it for you now and go uh, and then go to and discuss it more probably before the camera cuts down. And we're back again. So we're on to page nine now, and uh, obviously there's a. Uh, we cut into, I think, uh, Grop's ship, and it's coming up from uh, Fisherman Island. It's coming out of the bubble now, and, and it's underwater. It doesn't look like there's a bubble around it, though. Like, how are they breathing? So that's what happened. Vice Admiral Grump has has many acts of heroism under his belt. However, he doesn't like talking about this one in particular, huh? Why? He'll acknowledge it if you ask him about it. But, Big Mom and Kaido, things keep going from bad to worse. He work not if you ask him about it. but so this is on Goku talk and now we're cutting to Grob and he's reading basically the news about Big Mom and Kaido teaming up so yeah as he's saying things keep going from bad to worse so yeah shit's just and now I've gotten back to the meeting again the biggest reason why is because he allied with a pirate during that battle although that although that part was never reported so, oh so Grob did team up with some I wonder who a pirate. There was another reason, though. He had to protect the Celestial Dragons during that mission, huh? The Celestial Dragons were involved? Wait. Isn't it our duty as Marines to serve the Celestial Dragons? His sense of morality never allowed him to believe that. The main reason Grob always rejected the title of Admiral is because it would have made him a direct subordinate of the Celestial Dragons. Ah! There's, there's Grob with that will of D, man. Like, he's a, he's a D, you know, uh, Monkey D Grob, so... You know, he, that's good. That, that that makes sense why he's never why he's never allowed himself to like go into the high position because he does not want to take orders from those arseholes and rightfully so. The his popularity and achievements are probably the only reason why they haven't disposed of him for his attitude. Right, and now we're getting another flashback inside us. Sengoku's little hair, like 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 the hair has been used to show like this little flashback here, and he got Grop there, and uh, there's Big Mom, there's Kaido. There's Whitebeard, and there's that dude. I think that's meant to be Rock, Captain Rocks, the small dude. He's got like a, he's got those like big, thick, long hairs going on. He's got a sword, and uh, I'm assuming that's Goldie Roger next to Grop there, as, he's, as they're both going in to fight these four. So that's that's amazing. Uh, Grop and Roger, there you go. Grop and Roger encountered each other on the island and teamed up to defeat the Rocks pirates, all in order to protect the Celestial Dragons and their slaves during what is now known as the God Valley Incident. They did this to protect the, the Celestial Dragons and their slaves, and Roger went along with it. Like, holy shit, I'm surprised they didn't just team up with, with the Rocks Pirates to fucking kill them and get rid of them. Like, he fought alongside the Pirate King. Yeah, wow, that's a, that's a shock. What a roll call. The Celestial Dragons, Roger and the Rocks. What exactly was on that island? I've never even heard of the place. Ah! See, this is the question I was asking myself. What was so important about the island that they would they would go there? The island of God Valley is no longer drawn on the maps of the world. The truth of the matter is, after that incident, God Valley disappeared without a trace. An island that the world government wanted to hide was wiped from the history books. Do you really want to know more about an island like that? No, he's trying. To, he's basically trying to keep everyone quiet now about it. So, what's important? God Valley. What's there? Obviously, it was, uh, there must have been something there that uh, Kaido, Big Mom, and all of them went there to get, but they never did. They never got it. Grop probably knows what's on there. Goldie Ro Is this one of the reasons why they killed Roger, maybe? Think about it. Maybe, maybe, maybe he knew about it, and uh, they, they, they killed him to keep him silent, and it wasn't just a case of, oh, he's the king pirate, uh, you know, he's the pirate king, like, you know, uh, you know we're, we're going to execute him for that. No, maybe this is one of the reasons they killed him off, maybe, like... Uh keep quiet about something maybe he's so maybe he's one of the people who actually discovered what was on the island with Gop and they killed him to keep him quiet but they, they keep Gop alive because of his heroism and his acts so you know I don't know this is uh this is very interesting I'm curious I'm very curious now about this uh about this place like like Oda setting this up right and now, and now it's a case of 
it, it's a case of what happened there and I want to know more about it like seriously I want I want like a flashback arc or something now about this like we've not had something like that in, in years I think in One Piece like if you guys remember the last time we had like a separate I feel like the last time we had a big separate flashback arc was it was like Nolan you know regarding Nolan and the Skype here people like years ago when the series first started like I want something like that do you know what I mean like we go back in time and just explore all these different relationships Rock's ambition to become the king of the world meant he was involved in many of this world's taboo subjects that's why there isn't much information on the Rock's pirates anymore however I am sure that those memories are laying dormant in the minds of the more veteran marines even even though it's all in the past it seems unbelievable that there was a man capable of leading three of the four emperors. He was properly Roger's first and most formidable rival. He may have been known throughout the world as Captain Rocks, but his true name was Rocks D. Oh shit, he's, he's a, he was a D? Rocks D. Xbeck, uh, Zebek. So X E B E C, Zebek. Am I saying it right? Rocks D. Zebek. His true name was Rocks D. Zebek. He may no longer be amongst us, but he is one of the few of the initial D who have appeared from time to time. So it took two D's to take another D out. Huh. Was it, what's the, what, no, I, I was gonna say, I was gonna suggest, what's the probability that this dude is perhaps an Im, but like, no, it can't be, so. I'm so curious about this character, why, why? because I've heard rumors, like people are saying that he could be, uh, what's his name, Blackbeard's dad, but I don't see any resemblance there to Blackbeard, so I'm gonna say no. While well, uh, page 13, while it's true that Kaido and Big Mom were part of the same crew in the past, they are much stronger than they were 38 years ago. If they have truly formed an alliance, then it may lead to the formation of the worst pirate crew in the world. Bruh, what are the current... Bra brand new, bra brand, brand new. Alright, the guy he's talking to, brand new. What, what are the current bounties? Ah yes, I was just working on updating the bounties of those who have been stripped of their warlord status. So we, we may as well review these bounties as well. First, the man who became an emperor one year ago, Blackbeard. As a result of his attack on Impel Down two years ago, he was able to recruit very powerful subordinates. So then using that snail to new, as, a, as a projection to show the bounties, that's pretty cool. I think it's the first time we're seeing that, aren't we? He is the... I swear I knew I know this dude, bro. Brandly, brand new. Looks familiar. He is the current ruler of the Pirate's Island Beehive. So that's, that's where they all met beforehand, Runa Rocks and the Emperors. His influence is co uh, const constantly expanding and he is slowly overtaking Whitebeard as a force to be reckoned with. The Admiral of the Blackbeard Pirates, Marshal D. Teach. Bounty, two, uh, it's billion, isn't it? Two, two billion, two thousand, two, okay, twenty-two billion, two four seven point six hundred thousand. Okay, that's that's a lot. Uh, the next emperor we should discuss is this man. He was first recognized as an emperor six years ago and is the youngest of the four. His subordinates trust him greatly. His ex executives are all big names: Beckman, Rue, Yas Yasub. So this is so. The next one is uh, Shanks. Ah, interesting. I thought he would have a higher bounty. Boosting high bounties across the board. They are a well balanced and impregnable crew. The captain of the Red Hair Pirates, Red Hair Shanks, bounty. Four, wow, that's uh, twice as big that uh, Bagby, it's uh, 4 billion, uh, point zero four eighty eight thousand slash 900,000. Moving on, we have the natural born destroyer who is said to have wiped out a village on the island of giants, Elbaf, when she was a mere child. Refusing to trust anyone other than her own bloodline, she founded the country of Totu Land. Ruling over it with her 85 children. She's the queen of the kingdom of sweets. The captain of the big mom pirates, Charlotte Lily. Bounty, 4 billion, uh, 300,000, uh, 88, 100,000, okay. Uh, that's a bit, that's, that's just like a bit more than Shanks. And last but not least is this man. Although he was only an apprentice when he was with the Rocks Pirates, he was able to rally many infamous pirates through his banner thanks to his sheer strength and became an emperor in the process. The governor, the governor general of the Beast Pirates, Kaido of the Beasts, bounty, uh, four billion uh, six eleven point one hundred thousand. Wow, how depressing! 
I wonder how this compares to the other ones that we had, like we've got Roger in there. From here on out, we can no longer use the Seven Warlords as a weapon against the Four Emperors. We'll have to see how the SSG from the Marine Special Science Force re re performs before we can determine whether the removal of this uh, poison from our ranks was a wise decision. On a related note, these were the bounties on the legends of the previous era. The, uh, the Captain of the White Beard Pirates, Edward Newgate, bounty, oh, five billion. Point zero forty six point that hundred thousand. Wow, he was higher. And the captain of the Roger Pirates, the Pirate King Gold Roger, bounty five billion point five uh, hundred thousand sixty uh, five. Wow, five sixty four point eight hundred thousand. Damn, that's a lot. No single pirate has ever surpassed the bounties of these two. Well, until Luffy, I guess, because if he ends up beating these two, he's probably going to get a higher ass rank bounty than the others combined. However, if Kaido and Big Mom's alliance comes to fruition, their combined bounty will exceed them both. They are currently in Wano, a country that is unaffiliated with the world government. They are stomp stops, so someone's just walked in. Bam. Fleet Admiral Zazuzuki Akainu just walked in. We're leaving Wano alone. We don't have the resources to divert their son Goku son. Of course, I had no intention of interfering. I only wanted to pass on my knowledge to this new generation of Marines. Even pirates are capable of developing relationships with one another. Their actions always have a motive behind them. One cannot hope to predict the future when they are ignorant of the past. Speaking of which, there was a pirate in Wano that Whitebeard, Roger and Redhair favoured, wasn't there? Is this Zangoku talking? Do you mean Kozuki Oda? He used to be a, div a, a, a division commander on Whitebeard's ship. Even eventually he was uh, appro approached by Roger to accompany him to the pirate on the Pirate King's final voyage. This current situation couldn't possibly have anything to do with Older, could it? Well, doesn't it seem like Wano is a common factor for all these big shots? It's a, it's a bit, it's a bit too much of a coincidence, don't, don't you think, Zazazuki? What exactly is going on with Wano and Older? What does this mean? Is a motor Older that we suspected? What's going on? Maybe they're gonna reveal that they had something to do with his death properly, and not not just Kaido or whatever. Huh. Anyway, that was a that was a I w I wouldn't say that was a great chapter. I think I preferred I preferred last week's chapter a lot more. There's a lot more twists there. with the re re revelation that the Shinbaku system was down, the revelation that X Drake was actually secretly still an admiral and he was working with Colby and that. Uh, this chapter was good. We did get some backstory, not a lot though, but uh, I'm very curious where this is going, and I'm very curious what's going to happen next week as well. It doesn't it doesn't look like they're on a break, so that's good. Uh, we'll get another chapter next week, but uh, yeah. Yeah, guys, it's it's getting crazy. Mostly because uh, we're approaching, we're approaching one thousand chapters, guys. Think about it. In three in three more chapters, we'll be on nine hundred and sixty, and then forty more chapters after that, it'll be one thousand. And now that Act Two of One O is over, uh, usually my camera had to shut down just as I was to finish. As I was saying, since they since they follow the uh, Japanese play, uh, theater plays structure. Uh, act two is usually the longest in, in those plays, so that means the next three acts are gonna be, are probably gonna be similar to Act one, maybe. So we're probably gonna have twenty chapters for each of those acts instead of like the big. I assume I assume Act two was like f like forty chapters long. I think like uh, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, it, it's crazy. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to see like when when Act well, Act One ended. Uh, we started we started we basically started the uh, the water arc on nine nine hundred and ninety nine. Uh, and I think Act One ended. Act One ended. Maybe it ended with this chapter. Could be wrong. Right, yeah. So we started. We start. Act one ended in nine hundred chapter nine hundred and twenty four. Okay, and uh, it, it began with 909, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, no, no, wait, wait, wait. let's do that again, because one of these is like an extra thing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16. So Act 1 was 16 chapters. Now let's look at Act 2. <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, So 31, Act 2 was 31 chapters. So 16 versus 31 chapters. Uh, do, I, do, I, do I think Act 3, 4, and 5 are going to be that short? I'm going to say yes, because yeah, this was uh, way too long. Act, Act 3 was way too long, guys, come on. So I do think it's going to go sort of like uh, back into like the Act 1. I, I'm assuming at least 20 chapters for each of the next acts that we're getting. Which were, let, let me see, let, let's say, let's say uh, Act 3... For example, it starts at uh, chapter 960, you know, for example, and it's 20, actually, I'm very curious now, Let, let's say, let's say it does start like that, right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of a, where's my, cal where's my, where's my calculator? Look at me, trying to be all, uh, what's the word? Huh. Huh, what's going on here? Just go away. See, I hate, I hate this. I hate this new, the new, the way this layout was designed. Like, want to use a quick out you know what okay screw it screw it say 60 right uh, and then like each chapter is what 20 so we're looking at 80 100 so obviously it's going to surpass but if it's like 16 chapters then we're looking at oh i i don't know what uh 70 76 and then da, 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 92 so yeah overall the the arc uh, wano as a whole as an arc should probably end just after chapter 1000 basically so yeah, that's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just curious how this is all going to come together, man. Anyway, a uh, decent chapter, not the best one. We did get some backstory, but I'm curious. I'm very curious about this whole situation with God Valley and Captain Rocks now. Like, because it's just, seriously, old is just piling on the backstory more and more every time. Like, every time we're thinking we're getting near the end, he just keeps throwing more shit in there. And it's like, God damn it, like... Just, just stop. Not because it's bad. I mean, the world building in One Piece is amazing, but it's starting to get a bit too, too much. Like, goddamn. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm already forgetting a lot of things that happened in previous arcs. Like, I'm like, I, I just, just take a chill, man. Take a chill. Like, how, how much longer of this manga is left? And people are, people are saying it's gonna. Like, Oda said it's gonna end in five years. No, it's not gonna end in five years. You know, the way, the way he's going, like, it feels like he's adding more and more shit to it every single time. It, it felt like it was gonna end in five years, now I'm starting to think, no, it's gonna be more crap piling on. But I do feel like after Wano, we'll have a good indication of where the story might go. Like, we still need to get to Elbaf, guys. And then after we get to Elbaf, you know, it, it's gonna become a point of how many more other places are we gonna explore? Are we gonna go, are we gonna get a moon arc? Are we gonna go to Emerald City and see Vegapunk? Are we gonna go to God Valley now and see what was there? Do you mean there's all these little things they can do? Like, but uh, for now it's like, for now it's like, it's just this arc and Elbaf now that we have to sort of wait for, I think. So yeah, anyway guys, as always, like and subscribe, whatever, and I shall see you when I shall see you. Uh, take care and bye.